Hello from Copenhagen, Denmark. We've spent the last month in Europe, mostly in southern Germany and Finland, and it has been incredible. We'll be flying back to the US in a couple days, and the cheapest flights to and from Europe were through Copenhagen, so before we go, we're gonna explore this city. Copenhagen is the capital of Denmark and is known for its mix of architecture, biking culture, harbor and canals, and world-class restaurants, plus some iconic quick eats. We have never been to Copenhagen or Denmark before, so we're really excited to get a teeny tiny glimpse of the city and country, and first we're at Newhound, which is quite possibly the most iconic spot in all of Copenhagen. Newhound means New Harbor and was originally a commercial port where ships from all over the world would dock and today it's a very popular spot with tourists because of all the colorful buildings. We've been to a handful of places on this trip that we've seen photos of for years and it's always so exciting to finally get to see it in real life and this is no exception. There are quite a few castles and palaces you can visit in town, but we have limited time today and we've already been to a handful on this trip, so we're just gonna admire some from the outside. But the one behind me is Amalienborg, which is the residence of the Queen of Denmark and her family. And if the flag is flying above the building, that means she's in residence, so she's in there somewhere. We also learned that in two days, Crown Prince Frederick is gonna become king. We just popped into a coffee shop called Coffee Collective, which not only has great coffee, but it also has this beautiful seating area. It's an indoor courtyard with glass ceilings and then these tree branches hanging down with flowers, so it makes you feel like you're outside, even though you get to be inside. Still pretty cold, it's not heated, so, but you're protected from the wind, so it makes you feel a little bit better. One good thing to note about visiting Denmark is that they do not use the Euro, they use the Danish Krona, and we just got used to converting the Euro to the dollar, which is almost one to one right now, so it was pretty easy, and now we're having to learn a whole new currency just for one day. <laughs> You've also likely heard that Copenhagen is an expensive city to visit, and so far that is sort of proven to be true. We are keeping costs down a bit by staying in a private room at a hostel type hotel and trying to eat at more affordable restaurants, but we will say this flat white was 42 kroner, which is about $6.18 as of right now, which is about $2 more than all the flat whites we've had everywhere else in Europe. So it's pretty expensive, but it is really tasty. So my first impressions of Copenhagen so far is that it is beautiful, which we 100% expected because everyone you talk to about Copenhagen just raves about what a wonderful city this is. But I just love the architecture. The buildings are all very rectangular, but then at the top they have some curvature, different shapes and patterns to them. They're all different colors from each other, so every building looks a little bit different. So it just adds a nice variety when you're looking at it. And then suddenly behind one building you'll see a palace or you'll see this brick church with like these cool spires. It's just. It's just a gorgeous city. We also just love all the bikes and the bike culture here. You see people constantly riding around and just in the square alone there are hundreds of bikes. We actually just bought bikes and they're waiting for us at home and so the next time we come we're gonna come when it's a little warmer and we'll be more seasoned cyclists and we're gonna bike all over the city. There's a parade of horses coming by and they were like trumpeting some trumpet music. Maybe something's happening. Maybe it's the queen going through the streets. If anybody has any idea what that was, please let us know in the comments. It's so cool to be somewhere where something's happening. <laughs> cities on the water are always my favorite so another thing I'm loving about Copenhagen is just all the canals and the waterways and we're gonna get a closer look at these in a bit but first we are off to try a very iconic Danish and Copenhagen food item. Thank you. 
Thank, Thank you. you. You too. We try really hard and spend many hours researching pronunciations before filming, but for the life of us, we could not get our mouths to make the correct sounds or come anywhere close to pronouncing this food item correctly. So to not do it a disservice or embarrass ourselves, we're just gonna put the name of it on the screen for you. I even asked a local to say this word for me and then I practiced it in front of them and they're like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but this is an open-faced sandwich with the first half of the word meaning butter and the second half meaning bread. It is specifically made with rye bread and it is slathered with a layer of butter. And from there you have almost endless flavor and topping possibilities. And we got curried herring, mackerel, roast beef, and pork. We read that typically you're supposed to eat these with a fork and knife, but the woman in there said that if they're small like this, you can kind of just do them with your hand. Oh, that's so good. Instantly when you bite into this, you get a nice big chunk of that bread and you can taste that butter under there. And then I got a big bite of that herring, which is like super moist and tastes really fresh. And then it's just slathered in all that creamy like curry sauce. There's like tons of flavor on here. And this one especially is so messy. <laughs> it's on, I think oh, it's no. on your nose. Yeah, yeah, it's like right oh, there on no. your nose. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna try the pork one first, which has this nice little crispy pork skin on top. Mmm, mmm, that pork skin, holy cow, it's so good. This is delicious. The pork itself is just thinly sliced and has just a great flavor. And then you get that softness of the bread, the crispiness of this purple stuff on top. I'm not totally sure what it is. And then that pork skin crunch. Just a very fun texture experience. Oh, and then the tang of the pickles too. Wow. I'm going in on the mackerel. Mmm, mmm. There's so much fish in that, wow. I just love the concept of these because they make for a great snack or if you get a bunch of them, it can be a full meal. They're pretty affordable and you can just try so many different flavor combinations at once. One of the most popular things to do in Copenhagen is to go on a canal tour, but we've come across something possibly even cooler. We're gonna rent our own boat from GoBoat and do our own canal tour. But as you've probably noticed, the sun has completely vanished. It's now super foggy. It's also a really cold day. It's in the negatives and there's a little bit of wind, so I don't know. <laughs> I think this would be extra fun in the summer, but we'll see how fun it is today. go. <laughs> this is cool. All right. I'm the captain now. So a few important things to know about renting a go boat. First, you do not need a special license. You just have to be 18 years old. We rented the boat for about two hours, which costs almost 900 kroner, which does seem a little expensive, but this boat actually can fit eight people. So if you split it up with a bunch of friends, it's actually a really affordable activity. They also have a map with some areas you can go to and how long it takes. So our plan is to do the entire route, assuming that we have enough time. We also rented these heated seats and they are 100% worth it if you're coming in the winter keeping my butt nice and toasty. This is such a fun experience already. We're only a couple minutes in and I was thinking, how often do you get to, do I get to ride or drive my own boat? And I'm thinking, never. This is the first time I've ever like driven my own boat. This is so cool. <laughs> So earlier when we were up on the streets up there, we saw one of the canal boat tours take this turn under that bridge and they had to go all the way to the wall and use like every inch of space. And the guy captaining the boat, he didn't hit the wall or anything. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> Wow. 
One nice thing about the Gobo is that you go really, really slow, which means you can soak up all of the scenery around you and it makes it really easy to have a picnic on board. So we brought a couple different Danish treats to try. For our first item, we have these chocolates which have marzipan and marshmallow inside. And we also have a pastry which has custard inside. Oh my gosh, look at that. The marshmallow is so fluffy and it's creamy and sweet and then you get a good flavor of the marzipan which kind of has like an almond flavor. <laughs> I read that if you don't get a marshmallow mustache, you're doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong, but I'm getting, I'm close. <laughs> the inside of that is delightful. It is so fluffy and creamy. And then the base layer has a nice little crunch to it. Then the chocolate that surrounds it has a crunch to it too. Mm, that is an amazing pastry and the custard in there is so good. Even though it's hours old, we picked it up first thing this morning and it's still ridiculously good. That custard tastes like vanilla ice cream. Oh my goodness. It's flaky on the outside, ooey gooey on the inside. We should have gotten more than one of these. Honestly, this boat has been super easy to drive, but I have one more final test of my skills. I've got to dock this bad boy. Oh no, oh no. A little fast. Oh. <laughs> we hit the side. That's a good parking. There you go. Oh man, we hit the front. <laughs> Whoops, came in a little hot. <laughs> Even though it was so freaking cold out there. That was a blast. What a fun way to see the city. But now that we've seen the city from the water, we're gonna go see it from above. We are heading up the Round Tower, which was built by King Christian IV in 1642, and it is the oldest functioning observatory in all of Europe. It was built so that astronomers from the University of Copenhagen could gaze at the stars above the lights and the smoke of the city. We have been in quite a few towers recently, but what makes this one unique is that instead of a staircase at the top, it has a spiral ramp that winds seven and a half times around the tower's hollow core. I think this whole ramp thing is a fun little twist. Ooh! Like that one? <laughs> They have a section where you can walk into the middle and then see, I'm assuming, the hollow middle of the tower. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is deep. Oh my gosh. Yikes. Okay, we lied. It turns out there are some stairs, but not many. As you would expect, you have 360 degree views up here and you're not that high up, which sounds like a bad thing, but it's really cool because you're kind of just among all the rooftops and then off in the distance, you just see like church spire, church spire, tower, 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 just popping up among the roofs. If we had more time here, we'd go check out that giant building off in the distance with a big slope and a smokestack on it. It's called Copen Hill. It used to be a waste treatment facility, which sounds kind of weird, but nowadays there is a big ski slope up there with a bunch of other fun stuff to do. So up here is the observatory that uh, this whole thing was built for. <laughs> this is only open certain days of the week and I knew it wasn't open today so I didn't even think you could see this part, but this is awesome. You get to at least like get to look at it. Copenhagen is known for having a highly regarded culinary scene with 15 restaurants with a Michelin star rating and quite a few restaurants being ranked on the world's best restaurants list over the years like Noma and Alchemist. However, we're not really fine dining type people. We prefer street food and quick eats, but lucky for us, Copenhagen is known for something that's a little bit more up our alley, hot dogs.
One thing you'll likely notice when exploring Copenhagen is that there are a lot of hot dog stands, which are called hot dog vans. This first started in 1920, and even though it wasn't an affordable food item back then, it took off, and by 1950, there were over 400 hot dog vans in Copenhagen alone. And while this number has heavily declined over the years, it's still a beloved food item. And we got what we think is the classic version, which comes with ketchup, mustard, ramelade, fresh and fried onions, and then topped with pickles, and then also a very popular drink to have with it, is chocolate milk. That's really good. The sausage has amazing flavor. This bun is really good. It's lightly toasted. And then you have all those sauces on there. That add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of tang from the mustard as well. And then I love the crunch of the fried onions on there. And then pickles add a little bit more tang. It is a perfect concoction of flavors on here. I understand why it's so popular. I'm getting another one. <laughs> when we were in West Virginia, they also eat their chili dogs with chocolate milk, so it didn't seem as strange to us this time around. It was really good there. Yeah, it's a really good combo, actually, so I'm guessing this is gonna be two. Mm. Oh, that's a really good chocolate milk. Considering how cold it is, though, I wish it was hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> It is such a strange combination, but I do love it because you get kind of the savoriness and the sweetness, a little bit of saltiness, sweet kind of marriage going on here. We are ending our day here in Copenhagen at Bastard Cafe, which is a board game cafe. We have always wanted to go to one of these. When we saw that they had a cool one here, we figured it would be the perfect cold nighttime activity. We made a reservation in advance since it's a Friday and we didn't want to have to deal with finding a table in here, which was a good call because this place is popping off. Costs 150 kroner for the reservation for both of us, but that does come with two drink vouchers and access to all 5,500 games. But now for the hard part, picking which to play. We were torn on if we should pick a game that we already know how to play just to make our life easier or pick a brand new game. But we picked a new game, we picked Cascadia, which is about the Pacific Northwest, which is very special to us. We still live there and we love it with all of our hearts. And the premise of the game, so actually this game doesn't have any English instructions, so I pulled them up on my phone, but it says, Players compete to create the most diverse Pacific Northwest environment using different habitat tiles and wildlife tokens. So, not totally sure how to play it yet, but it tells you how to set it up, and I think we're just gonna get rolling. We're, we're both like, or at least me, I'm kind of a slow game learner, so it usually helps if we have someone with us that knows, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> we also got nachos. No game is complete without nachos, right? So I'm gonna take this one and then I'm gonna do it here. Ooh, and I got like a double whammy because these match and then these match nice. and then I put this on one. Any one you want? It has to have the elk on it. All right, we've reached the end of the game. We're gonna tally up our points. Who do you think's gonna win? All right, we've got it tallied up. Catherine is the winner by... How many points? <laughs> That's, uh, that's like 19 points. Good game. Ooh, that was fun. There's obviously more to do and eat here in Copenhagen, and we had planned to spend another day here, but then we realized Malmo, Sweden is right next door. So for our final day here in Europe, we're heading to Sweden. This is the reality of filming food for the vlog. Gotta have great sound. We had police cars going by. Now we have bells going. Before that, we had a screaming kid. This it's just a waiting game sometimes. <laughs> Our hot dogs are a thousand percent gonna be cold by the time we eat them, as is most of the food that we eat, but thankfully they're cheap enough that we can go get fresh ones to eat off camera after this. It is now three minutes later and the bells are still going. We're never gonna get to eat. <laughs> people around us are probably like, why are these people just holding their hot dogs? <laughs> and then they're like, why are they filming themselves eating their hot dogs? <laughs> And why is he doing this dance right now? <laughs> One thing you'll likely notice when exploring Copenhagen is that there are a lot of hot dog stands, which are called hot... Oh my god. It was like the final <laughs> bell. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. I gotta just power through this. These ones aren't as bad, right? No. One thing you'll likely notice when exploring Cope... 
And now Adam just knocked over my hot dog Sorry. and I lost some toppings. Oh my gosh. Wiener cheers. Wiener cheers. <laughs> oh, I can't stop with the sausage jokes. This bench is nice and icy. And then you got a nice good old butt mark right here. I'm gonna try to sit right here, right on the warm butt mark. Ghost cheeks. <laughs> Adam just said, get a shot of me waving. I was like, oh, who are you waving at? He's like, no one. I just want to pretend I'm waving at someone. <laughs>